for YouTube and welcome, welcome, welcome to a special edition of Game Time with Tom. It's a new idea, it's not it's a name we just made up there and then. But today we're here to talk about Batman Arkham Knight. A game that on consoles is absolutely fantastic. It's getting 10 out of 10, it's getting rave reviews. They're saying the combat is fantastic, the story is fantastic, the gameplay as a whole is brilliant. Hell, you get to drive the Batmobile, chase bad guys down and see a plethora of Batman bad guys. It's awesome. So if you're a console gamer, fantastic. However, this is a huge however, if you're a PC gamer, what you've got is a pile of unworkable crap. I bought Batman Arkham Knight on uh, on G2A because you know, Steam keys are not too expensive on there. It's about £25 on it, it's not a small amount of money, about 40,000 yen, about $500. I tried loading it last night, it didn't go so well. I loaded it, it was bitty, the frame rate was awful, it was just really bad. So I came out, I changed the settings, made the max FPS 9999, all that kind of stuff, and the game now runs. I'm lucky in that respect, the game runs. However, what it doesn't do is look good. It looks awful. Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, look as good as this game. This is a next gen game that has an absurd the, the absurd requirements when it comes to playing the game. You need like a 2 gig dedicated RAM graphics card just to be able to run it on low. Luckily, I've got a GTX 970. I've got like 3 gig, 4 gig, whatever it is, tucked away somewhere. So I can run it on normal, which is ludicrous. No game should require power such as this. And if it does require that power, then fair enough, as long as the game is incredibly sexy. But this isn't. I was going to show you some gameplay footage today, but it's not agreeing with open source broadcaster, so I'm not able to do so. But I can talk you through what I've seen so far. The game plays. If you fix things, if your PC is good. I've got 8 cores, overclocked to like 9 uh, to 4.2. I've got uh, only 8 gig of RAM, but 4 gig of dedicated RAM in the graphics cards. So I've not got a bad machine. It runs everything on Ultra. It should run this with ease on Ultra. And it runs it on high. But it but what it doesn't do is make it look any better because the texture quality is poor when you look at walls, when you look at other people their faces, everything is poor motion blur, no PC gamer likes motion blur you can't turn it off without crashing your PC motion blur makes the game look ridiculous this game should be awesome and I think probably in two or three months time it will be awesome and we'll all have forgotten about this but it's time the PC gamers made a bit of a stand. Total Biscuit has been saying don't pre-order. It's not something I ever really subscribed to until this game. The man's right. You shouldn't pre-order a PC game because you do not know how bad the port is going to be. In this instance, it's disgraceful. Warner Bros and Rocksteady only really have themselves to blame. Rocksteady, I feel the blame falls less on. You may disagree with me on this because they were probably pushed into releasing the game by Warner Bros. But, how this got through the QA process at Warner Bros, who I know put this out to an external developer to do the port, which in itself is offensive to PC gamers. Why is it that the two, console, uh, the two consoles even take priority over the PC gamers? We spend the same money, we buy the game in large quantities as well. So why do we fall behind? If, if you know the game's going to be bad, then don't release it. Don't release it to us in the state that Warner Bros did. This is going to be very, very hard for them to repair damage-wise. Look at Ubisoft. Assassin's Creed Unity was panned because of how buggy it was. Everyone laughed at it. They released free DLC. They made numerous apologies. But since then, Ubisoft has gone on to become one of the most hated countries in the gaming the gaming world, in, in the whole sort of industry. I think they may, may even now have surpassed EA um, and taken that mantle as being the most hated. It's not difficult. If a game isn't ready, don't release it. Give us some nabby pamby bollocks about why it isn't going to be released. Yes, we'll be slightly angry. Yes, we'll be annoyed. But we'll get over it. What we find very difficult to get over is a game that's delivered and is this bad. It's locked at 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second, sorry. It's glitchy. It's buggy. Bat sequ Batmobile sequences are almost unplayable. This is not a rant that I wanted to have. I love Batman, and I've been looking forward for months 
to jumping in the Batmobile and running bad guys over, without killing them of course, and just absolutely poning face, but I've not been able to do so. All I've been met with is bitter disappointment, and I'm not the only one who shares this view. It went on Steam within sort of 40, 50, 60 minutes, all there were were thousands of negative reviews and complete bafflement at how a game, a triple A title of this magnitude, with this much hype, could be released in the state that it was. So it's now off the Steam store. Steam are no longer selling Batman. Warner Bros made this decision, but as far as I'm concerned, it's come too late. Don't release it if you've got to pull it. If it's not ready, it's not ready. I work in IT, I'm a project manager. If the application just isn't ready to be released, don't release it. If the Harley Quinn DLC was ready, then maybe release that in the interim. Give them something to work with. Do not release a game that's broken. So, that's my rant pretty much over. And what I'd be really interested in hearing, your thoughts below. Let me know how you feel about the joke that has been the release. Are there reasons for it? Are there excuses? Am I being overly harsh? Or am I on point? Has this been a giant balls up that should not happen again? Um, please do let me know your thoughts and feelings below. If you liked it, press that little thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, just pretend it didn't happen. And if you really liked it, there's a subscribe button down there as well. I'm not entirely sure how many of these kind of informative, vaguely ranty chats I'll have, but um, I guess it depends on how many shit games are released in the very near future. But thank you so much for watching YouTube. It's always a pleasure, and I am Batman.